So is the United States officially moving past the question of, you know, how to regulate AI right. and instead focusing on how to weaponize it for scientific dominance? That's exactly the shift we're seeing. This White House executive order from November 24th, 2025, it launches what they're calling the Genesis mission. The Genesis mission. Yeah. And for so long, the whole conversation was just about safety, about ethics. This is all about application. It's about acceleration. This order really does feel like a major inflection point. We've gone from talking about guardrails to, well, setting up the national infrastructure for something huge. Absolutely. So if you've been trying to keep up, our focus here is simple. We're going to break down the legalese, the technical documents around this whole national initiative. Mm -hmm. We really need to understand the architecture, the goals, and the, I mean, the massive implications here. Right, because this is a serious attempt to fuse the reasoning of these huge AI models with the actual hard physics of the real world. Okay, let's unpack this then. This is not another chatbot wrapper. Not even close. What's so fascinating is the ambition. The Genesis mission is being led by the Department of Energy, the DOE. The agency that runs the national labs, the nuclear complex, they're serious. They are. And the mandate is to build this American science and security platform. This isn't just some pilot program. It's a massive federal effort to get a, uh, a, a 10x acceleration in discovery rates. A it 10x. So when we strip away all the bureaucracy, yeah. what does the core blueprint of this this platform actually look like? It looks like a federally mandated nervous system. It's designed to solve a really old problem in science, data siloing. Okay. Think about it. For years, you've had the DOE national labs sitting on petabytes of incredibly valuable data from particle physics, material stress tests, all of it just locked away. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you have the private sector, you know, Silicon Valley with the best algorithms and all the cutting edge GPUs. So the knowledge, the government's data and the horsepower have been totally separate. Exactly. Disconnected. The Genesis mission mandates what they call a federated approach to bridge that exact gap. It connects that siloed government data directly with private sector AI models. It creates this high speed pipeline. The whole point is to train a new kind of foundation model. And these aren't for understanding language. No, not at all. They have to understand the actual laws of physics, of material science, as fluently as something like GPT-4 understands English syntax. They're trying to build an AI that can predict the next superconductor, not the next word in a sentence. That feels like a huge technical leap beyond just a standard large language model. The documents use these uh, intimidating terms, multimodal large action models or MLMs, and geospatial reasoning. Can you break those down? Sure. An LLM, you know, takes text in, gives text out. An MLM is designed to take in multiple types of data 3D models, sensor readings, lab results, text, and this is the key part, perform actions based on that. An AI that can actually do things, a scientist in a box. Pretty much. And geospatial reasoning is its ability to understand the world in 3D. It needs to get physical constraints, pressure, temperature, all of it. You need that if you're going to control, say, a fusion reactor. Okay, so the comparison that immediately flooded social media was, of course, the AI Manhattan Project. It's a great headline, but mm. what makes that analogy technically accurate? Well, there are three really specific parallels that the documentation itself draws. The first one is the centralization of talent. Like Los Alamos in the 40s. Exactly like that. Pulling the top experts from universities, from private tech, from the national labs, all into one unified orbit. A single national priority. The second is massive federal funding. Now, this part still needs Congress's approval, which we can get to, but the scope implies a wartime level of investment. Right. And third, there's a very explicit national security focus. They're linking scientific discovery directly to maintaining global strategic leadership. High stakes, top talent, huge capital. But the Van Houten Project was built to create a single destructive thing. What's the fundamental difference here? And that difference is profound. The Manhattan Project was designed to destroy. The Genesis mission is explicitly designed to create. Its output isn't a weapon, it's a platform. It's about building the most powerful science machine on Earth. So if the platform is the engine, the executive order also gave us a blueprint for what it's going to work on. These six core problems. Hmm. Where's all this compute and money going to flow first? They're targeting the biggest bottlenecks in the physical economy. The first 
and maybe the most ambitious, is nuclear fission and fusion. The holy grail of energy. Right. And fusion is incredibly unstable. You have this plasma hotter than the sun that you have to contain inside these devices called tokamaks. Yeah. It needs constant real-time control. And a human just can't watch that feedback loop fast enough to keep it stable. No way. But an AI agent can. Operating at incredible speed, it can manage that plasma in a way no human operator could. Solving energy is goal number one. Okay, what's the next big vertical? Second is biotechnology. Speeding up drug discovery, basically. Using AI for advanced protein folding, running a decade of pharma R&D in a few months. Mm -hmm. Third is critical materials. This is all about national security, breaking our reliance on foreign supply chains for rare earth elements. The mission is to use AI to find better ways to mine them or even invent synthetic replacements. That ties the science part of the platform directly to the security part. Precisely. And the last three are about industrial execution. So fourth is advanced manufacturing AI agents correcting assembly line errors in real time. Fifth is quantum information science. Using classical AI to optimize quantum computers. You got it. And sixth, which is fascinating, is semiconductors and microelectronics. Designing the next generation of chips using the current generation of AI, it's recursive self-improvement for the hardware itself. That self-referential loop is really interesting. So let's focus on how this actually changes the day-to-day -day job of a scientist. You mentioned this four-step autonomous loop. This isn't just faster analysis. This is industrializing science. That's the perfect word for it. The loop is designed to take the human out of the slowest parts of the scientific method. So step one is hypothesis generation. The AI agent doesn't just read a few papers. It synthesizes, say, 50 years of global research on polymer chemistry and proposes a new compound a human might never even think of. Then step two, the simulation. Yep. The agent immediately uses a DOE supercomputer to simulate the properties of that new compound to see if the theory holds up digitally. But step three is the real kicker, physical experimentation. Right. The AI doesn't just email a result to a person. No, it sends direct instructions to a robotic laboratory, what they call a self-driving lab. A self-driving lab. I mean, are these things really reliable enough to just run 24-7 on their own? That seems like the hardest part. It is the biggest real-world bottleneck, for sure. These are automated facilities where robots are mixing chemicals, running reactions, taking measurements, all around the clock. The order admits it's a huge challenge, but the goal is continuous, autonomous operation. Removing the human sleep cycle from the equation. Exactly. And then step four closes the loop. Loop closure. The physical data from that robotic lab gets fed immediately back into the AI model. So it updates its own weights and refines the next hypothesis in real time. Instantly. The human sets the big picture goal, but the machine runs the cycle. That's how you get to 10x acceleration. This level of speed and compute it immediately brings up the AGI question. Does a mission like this accelerate the timeline toward artificial general intelligence? The answer is almost certainly yes, but it's not just about the chips. The documentation uses this phrase I find really insightful, thermodynamic realism. Thermodynamic realism, that sounds impressive. But isn't that just a fancy way of admitting that these huge AI models use so much power, they're basically unsustainable without government-level energy projects? You've nailed the core insight. Training these models takes gigawatts of power. Placing this whole mission under the Department of Energy is a direct admission that intelligence and energy are two sides of the same coin. You can't scale one without scaling the other. So by solving for energy like stabilizing fusion, they're not just feeding their own platform, they're lifting the energy constraint for all future AI development. Exactly right. It creates this incredibly powerful positive feedback loop. Better AI helps solve energy. Better energy lets you train even bigger, more powerful AI. Okay, we have to talk about the economic reality here. The critics are already pointing to the bailout concern. This sounds like a massive subsidy for the hardware companies. And that's a fair point. The government is going to have to buy thousands upon thousands of high-end GPUs, your H100s or whatever comes next. Critics are saying this is just a multi-billion dollar transfer of taxpayer money straight to a few private companies. So how does the government justify that? The defense is in the public-private partnership structure. The argument is, yes, private companies provide the hardware, but the government retains oversight and often the IP rights to the foundational discoveries made on the platform. So they see it as an investment, de-risking critical national technology. 
classic industrial policy. But then there's the even bigger funding reality. An executive order is a statement of intent. It can't print money. It's all subject to available appropriations. That phrase is everywhere in the text. For this to get to Manhattan Project scale, Congress has to write some very, very big checks. If they don't, this whole thing could stall out. Which brings us to the last major concern, safety. You put nuclear weapons complex and autonomous AI agents in the same sentence, and people immediately think of Skynet. How does the order handle security? Section 3B is all about this. It mandates incredibly strict security standards, supply chain verification. They know the risks of connecting these AIs to critical infrastructure. But you said the primary security mechanism isn't about combat. It's about scientific advantage. Right. The theory is that the country with the best superconductors and the most stable energy grid wins the tech race without firing a shot. But the dual use problem is very real. The same AI that can design a new vaccine could, in theory, design a new pathogen. And that's the core challenge. The documentation says guardrails can't just be filters on the output. They have to be baked into the model weights, into the training data itself. So to really bring this home for everyone listening, let's just quickly contrast the two workflows, traditional science versus this new Genesis mission science. Okay. In traditional science, your data source is fragmented, siloed. In the Genesis mission, it's federated and accessible. Your hypothesis goes from human intuition, reading a few papers, to an AI agent synthesizing millions of data points. Experimentation goes from slow and manual to robotic. 247 operation. And the feedback loop shrinks for months or years of waiting for peer review down to real-time model updates. That's it. That's the velocity. The era of, you know, laissez-faire AI development in the U.S., it, it's over. The state is stepping in as the biggest, most ambitious player. And success really does come down to execution. Uh, government software projects don't have the best track record. But then again, the DOE already manages the nuclear stockpile. They know high stakes. They absolutely do. If the Genesis mission works, if it actually moves from paper to reality, right. we are looking at a fundamental shift in, well, everything. We're looking at an America using silicon to truly master the atom. The prompt has been entered. And now you have to ask yourself, if the government successfully builds a platform, that delivers verified scientific breakthroughs 10 times faster than the private sector. How long until that becomes the single defining factor in global power? The model is running, and we're all waiting for the output.